loves and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm getting into my Chanel unboxing and what it was like to shop Chanel while I was on my trip to Europe. Now I did this for my Hermes items so I'll link that video above here. Chanel I didn't go into as many so the story is definitely much shorter and I did pick up a couple of items that I have been looking for and as usual whenever I shop Chanel in a different country I find these like random gems of pieces that are from seasons past. I also shopped at this really cool vintage store which I'll have linked below in the description and I found a vintage Chanel item as well so I have that to unbox for you along with one other item that isn't Chanel that I got from that store. By the way if you're new here hi my name is Morgan I make videos about luxury handbags fashion and lifestyle so if that's your thing please subscribe and turn on notifications I upload once a week and I would love to have you here and let's get into my Chanel unboxing. I asked them to pack it in the smallest box possible because I was traveling so all of my items are actually packed in one box because I said I didn't want extra packaging that is something you can do if you're traveling and you don't want a lot of boxes I did remove the ribbon it just looked crushed and not so great from the travel so here we go I tried to save the little flower but it didn't really work out so the first two items are in this I found the blue version of the pink Twilly that I got in Abu Dhabi. I share that over on my Instagram. I don't think I shared it here, but it's on this blue cocoa handle here, and I'll pop a picture on the screen of what it looks like. I have been looking for Chanel Twillies for years. I saw this blue one in Abu Dhabi as well, but I knew I was traveling, and I was like, you know, let me just pick one. And I did finally see this. It was in Berlin. I had been in stores in Zurich, Munich and Frankfurt. It was like a week or two before the new collection launched, so everything was pretty bare bones. They had everything they had in the entire store was pretty much out on the floor. There was just not stock of a lot of stuff, and like the essays opened the cabinets for me in Zurich and in Frankfurt and showed me there are not even bags in the cabinets on the floor. So it was just, you know, there there was not even a chance of finding anything in those three stores. So even the scarves, when I went to Berlin, I was like, oh my goodness, you have scarves. And I was like, I was just in Munich and I didn't have but like three Twillies. And she's like, yeah, a lot of people are coming from other stores in the country because they're not getting stock of items in their city. Berlin is a store to shop in Germany, so they had great stock of scarves, so I picked this one up. And I was shocked to find another Twilly. I had seen someone on Instagram have this one and I just thought it was so pretty, just the pink and the white. And on the other side, it's like the white with the pink. Every time I call this a Twilly, everyone's like, it's an Hermes term. Yes, it is. They call it a bandeau or call it a skinny scarf. So I have walked into multiple Chanel's and I said, can I please see the skinny scarves or can I please see the bandeaus? I've tried both terms. And every time I do that, they go, oh, you mean the Twillies? So they use Twilly in Chanel too. I'm so tired of being corrected on this. So you go and try it for yourself. Walk into Chanel and use the word bandeau or skinny scarf or whatever term that you think is what Chanel uses and see if they correct you and call it a Twilly. But it took me years to find some designs that I liked and now I'm shocked. You know, it's like you look for something for so long and then all of a sudden you find multiple that you love. I was asking for bags. This was also in the Berlin store. And I was like, you know, do you have any just like pinks or teals or like bright colors? Cut out first for me, a Tiffany Blue 20A Chanel Vanity. Didn't take the bag, but here's a picture of it. And I was so tempted. It would have been the bigger size that fit my phone. I would have taken that bag for sure. But they had a 22P pink piece that I had asked for in Dubai. This is the belt bag from the Melody line. They didn't even get this piece in Dubai. I asked for it on collection launch day. She checked the system. She said we didn't even receive this piece. So I was just shocked that they had one left and it's this perfect, gorgeous Barbie pink with an aged gold hardware. It has the loop on the back. I tried it on and you can wear it nicely as a little shoulder bag as well. It just depends on how you put the strap or you can wear it as a belt bag. And I was looking for a Chanel pink belt and when this piece came out I thought it was so versatile that it was like the perfect one to go for. This one is in caviar leather. This is from the 22P collection so they still did authenticity cards with the SLGs then and with the SLGs you still get the authenticity um, 
sticker rather than the plate like you do with the handbags now. It's just one empty pocket. You can fit a lipstick, cards, and a car key, and that's about it. Perfect for a night out, especially if you keep your phone in your hand. So I'm super happy I found this. Now I'll get into the prices. I don't have, you know, a current one to compare it to because this is now an old collection, but I can tell you what I paid retail. So then you know if you're getting a good deal pre-love. So this little one was 1700 euros. I'll put the dollar conversion up on the screen. And then of course I got tax refund as well. So my total refund amount was around 11%. I'll put what the final price is up on the screen. Now I wanted to compare the prices of the Twilly for you because I did buy one in Abu Dhabi when I was there like a couple weeks before my trip. As I paid for the Twilly in Abu Dhabi was 1100 dirhams. As that converts today on the Google conversion calculator, that's 299 euros. Price I paid in Berlin for the blue one was 250 euros, plus I got about 11% tax back. So you can see there's quite a big difference, even on a little Twilly. You are saving a ton by shopping Chanel in Europe versus Dubai as a tourist. Or even if you live in Europe and you're coming to Dubai, people message me all the time about what they should shop and I'm like you live in Europe your prices are so much cheaper and usually your selection is better as well so I would say if you're coming to Dubai like shop only local brands or if there's a sale on because you're just gonna be overspending on items unless it's just an item you can't get where you live but for the most part Europe is definitely much cheaper than if you're shopping in UAE. I'll put a comparison up here on the screen as well with the US price I'll take it from the US website Keeping in mind that they do have sales tax on top of the price, the Europe price is inclusive of their sales tax, so that's why you get the VAT deduction when you go to the airport, but when they show you the list price in the store, it's not like you get to the register and you pay more. So it's kind of always like a little weird doing the comparisons because you have to keep in mind sales tax is different in each state in the US. So you could be paying anywhere from like five to 10% sales tax on top. So I just use the retail price to make the comparison, but actually it's even more savings if you take into account the sales tax that they have in the US as well. I also picked up a couple of items from a vintage designer store in Berlin, they carried the most beautiful, colorful pieces. I almost bought this gorgeous Hermes dress, but it wasn't something I would get a lot of use out of in Dubai, so I was a little unsure about it. So I did leave that, but I did get a couple of items, and one of them is Chanel, so I wanted to unbox it with you here. I found this vintage, like, graffiti looking Chanel scarf. I just thought this was like the coolest scarf, especially for the beach, like, tied as a sarong. It has such a cool look to it and I love the colors. I also picked up one other item, vintage Escada shirt. I don't know if it's men's or women's or what, but I just loved the pattern on the silk. The colors are just so fun and beautiful. It's almost like a designer take on like a Hawaiian shirt. It has these beautiful jewel print details. I just loved like all the color in this shirt. So you can match it with so much because it, even though it has red, it also has like pink in it. This will look super cute tucked into jeans. Link all the details of that vintage store down below. The area where that store is super cute for shopping local and thrift stores and like vintage kind of places. And also like really cute restaurants and little small like concept things like small bakeries. There's a really nice matcha cafe in the area too. But I also have all of my Berlin stories from Instagram saved to a highlight. So if you're going to Berlin or any of the other cities that I visited on my trip, I do have highlights over there for where I stay what I ate, what I did, all of that kind of stuff. So that will be linked in the description below and make sure you're following me there if you enjoy a little more behind the scenes content and wanna watch my stories when I travel. Let me just get into a few overall thoughts about shopping Chanel in Europe this time. One thing that was a little bit irritating is that I was like a week to two weeks before collection launch. Now, it depended on the store if I was there for collection launch. So when I was in Munich, they said the collection was coming out the next Friday. That Friday, I was in Berlin and that's when I went to the Berlin store. When I got to the Berlin store, they said, oh no, for Berlin, it's actually the following Friday. So each store had different launch days for the new collections. That's the only reason I even went into the Berlin store because I thought they would have the new collection. Okay, and I found a couple things, but if you're not around, you know, a week to two weeks after a new collection launches, it's pretty slim pickings until the next collection launches. I also found that with shoes, they had a lot on display, some from old seasons, new seasons, like it was such a mix. I think they just chucked every style they had 
out on the display so they could fill their displays and this was across every Chanel store I visited. I asked for shoes at each store that I had seen on display and I liked and only one store had one pair that I asked for, those little Polly Pocket looking heels. My size, I tried them on and they were so painful. I don't know why these are so popular on Instagram. So I left them. Amsterdam, I would have gone in the store as well. It was after collection launch, but it was such a long line and it was after my horrible Hermes experience, which I detail in my video I'll have linked in the description. But I just didn't have it in me to wait because I was like, there's nothing specific from the new collection I wanted. I just wanted to have a look and see what they had. And they did have cocoa handles in the window display, but we all know like what's in the window display does not mean they have it available to sell you. So I was like, you know what? There's like a 50-50 chance they would have a cocoa handle in stock for me to look at. So I said, you know what? We're not gonna take the time out of the trip. It was also the same case with earrings. So I asked for earrings at all the boutiques that I went to. Berlin had one pair of earrings. That was the one thing that they literally lacked. They had actually only one style of earrings in stock at all. I was asking for smaller earrings and every store were like, these are all the earrings we'd have. And they pull out one tray and each store had less than 10 styles. Scarves were also a hit and miss. I was looking for the Twillies throughout all the stores as well. And some of them did have some styles, but each store had very different styles. If you do want a scarf, you'll be able to find something in store even in between collections, but your selection will vary drastically from store to store. But the good thing is, is from all the things I've been seeing on social media and how long the line is in Paris to get into the store, none of the lines to get into the Chanel stores in the other cities were that long. It's a positive if there's no waiting. I mean, just pop in, see what you can find, but I don't think it's worth waiting in a long line. Definitely go as early as possible if you wanna avoid lines. You have to weigh if it's really worth it to you to wait and go into a store. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was packed with enough useful information that can help you if you're traveling soon. If you did enjoy it, please give it a like if you would, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram and TikTok to see how I style my bags and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.